see, I don't know how we got talking about that. Sorry, guys. I must be in a reflective mood today, eh? <laughs> This morning in the old days, chasing some uh, erosion in the paddock for our neighbour. So we've uh, got most of our beds done. I'll I might show you in a bit. We'll see how we go. We'll uh, just head down to a little job here. He's got apparently a bit of a washout for about 100 metres where the weed it won't go through very well. I'm going to tidy that job off and we're going to go back up and finish some contours. We've sort of had a little bit of rain, so it's been um, a bit off and on, just when we can. We're getting to the pointy end of the season where we're, uh, I suppose, not wanting to really make too much of a mess in the paddock. So this, they're talking rain in a couple of days, and that'll quite possibly, if we get 30 mil or 50 mil, that'll be our uh, sowing rain for in about a month's time, five weeks' time, so yeah pretty good timing if, uh, if it does come and we can capitalise on it so the boys have been uh, Kelly chaining at the moment they're, um, they're having a crack down around the I think they went all night last night so just trying to get that done uh, on the canola stubble just trying to level that down and get that good seed bed for the um, those good little wheat seeds grow you good things eh well, we're um, into our waterway, oh, sorry, not waterway, just the gully. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what we've done up there. That's what we've got to finish, about probably another 100 metres. And it flattens out. It's not, not real bad, but he was just having trouble getting his weed in through, so I'll uh, take the edge off it, and that'll get him going, and be able to get into it. But um, I was thinking, like, people have asked in the past, uh, why use this sort of a dozer? I think we've answered it, different ones have answered it different ways, so just a bit of a refresher maybe for those that are scratching their head thinking uh, a D6 would do this job particularly. And, um, no, you're certainly right, a D6 would do this job. Uh, it would do it well. Um, I suppose there's a few reasons. But often a small dozer is just about the same price as a big one, second hand. Um, and the beauty is with these ones is I don't have to be sitting on the seat as much. So that's a big factor. We can get the job done a lot quicker. And uh, we find that there's a lot of um, a lot of parts available for those ones too, because uh, in the mining scene there's uh, there's a lot of them. So that's another good a good thing. So we can get um, aftermarket parts if we need to for a lot of the stuff, which certainly helps uh, supply of parts has become a big issue as ever. All you guys out there at know too, eh? Hey, like, just getting parts is a battle. So, we've actually had a pretty good run with parts on this thing. I know other dozers that are not quite as common, like, um, you know, there's lots of variations on your sixes and different things, and um, sometimes it can be a bit tricky getting, getting parts for that. Um, but I suppose, in a nutshell, it's. Uh, Pretty much the cost of getting into it wasn't too bad, and um, the fact that we, because we're primarily farming, this is just a bit of a side thing, just to keep our farm up to scratch and um, a bit of contracting off the side. We don't, we don't really want to give ourselves a job for 12 months of the year. So if we can get in and with a cut man fill on the dozers, if we can bash out a job pretty quick. Well, that's a win-win for us anyway, so, um, so yeah, sometimes the, the dozer is a bit too big, but um, 
it's surprising how uh, even a little job you think oh the dozer would be too big but it actually yeah you could do it with a small one but it seems to go good and just gets that job done quicker the other other good part is I don't know Matt may have been giving me a hard time in the past or not sure but I do like my rocks and that sort of thing and these things are unreal in a um, in a rock quarry too just having that weight to be able to uh, rip up that rock we got the black basalt or decomposed basalt really where we try and get our rock out so these things are um, really really handy for that so for that alone probably gets me over the line anyway <laughs> so we can get in there rip her up and get it out we've had other dozers in the past we had a d9 i think and he did a he did a really good job um, but the issue is he started once we got down a couple of meters the rock gets a bit harder or i think it's just more the fact that it's bound real close together less dirt in there less fractures you know so you've got to break it up with that ripper so having a having a bit more weight is a good thing and not so much the horsepower for the box but certainly the weight is a uh, excellent anyway that's a bit of a long-winded way of saying uh, just yeah some of you guys might be might be wondering but thinking we're a bit mad and uh, well certainly I'm not going to deny that we are mad <laughs> you got to be a little bit special I reckon we'll keep keep working our way down here and and I'll dress up just give it a light dress they got a big bucket like a big drag bucket thing so they'll um, they'll come along and, and tidy most of it up just getting the dirt sort of pushed there really well, we're just uh, dressing off now guys so just push her up run along the top here I think probably an up and a back will, will do it for this one I'm hoping and then we'll go to the next adventure I was just thinking before with my um, ramblings that I might have been given some trade secrets away <laughs> no no it is good um, I like to, we don't mind being open with people but it's good you know you help one another out I reckon but I was thinking there are a couple of downsides to having, having these things probably one of them is the fact that if you do get bolts, as you've seen in past videos, they can be a bit of a um, test to try and get out again. So that's definitely a bit of a downside. Um, transporting from job to job, that's another downside. Um, and probably the other one I was thinking was like um, some of the tooling required, you know, and machinery to be able to fix the things. So. That's why we bought that big 10 ton forklift um, to be able to change out final drives and transmissions and all that sort of thing. Um, a lot of your components might be, um, probably the heaviest one that I know of would be about four and a half ton, but see with a forklift, a lot of their measurements are measured back at the, the headstock of the forklift or 600 mil out from the headstock where their weight is so but we've got to reach out to reach over things so often you could be two or three meters out so that's why probably you need a lot bigger forklift than the actual weight of the uh, component just because of the reach um, so that's a bit of one and, that, and we got that that high torque um, hydraulic torque wrench you know just so we could do the bolts up and undo them so there's a couple of things like that that make might make uh, some people a bit scared off from um, having a crack at those sort of things. Uh, yeah, so that's probably some of the downsides. I told you some of the upsides. Um, probably as far as having work, as I said, it's not really our our main gig at all. We're uh, we certainly we're just farming, really. But uh, well what we have found is a lot of the people we do do work for they've got the sixes and the, the eight and some have got eights too um, so they've already got dozers and they they just get us in to do the 
the jolts that are either going to take too long or uh, too much, too much dirt to push. Um, so we don't really compete, I guess, with any. We're not trying, not that we're trying to compete, but it's just now uh, we've got a bit of a. Well, every every man and his dog's got a six, basically around here. So there's sort of if you got another six, well. We wouldn't, we wouldn't probably have any contract work on anything, which maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we could focus on the farm a bit more. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's certainly a challenge in these when we have a normal wetter year because of the um, just the constraints with the getting on there in a in a window that you've got. Uh, once again, we're pushing the window pretty late. We're a month out the sun, as I said earlier, so. <laughs> It's uh, not really ideal. You'd like to let your country recover a little bit, but it's, uh, sometimes just getting the job done is more important, uh, yeah, than, than the ideals of just leaving it for a month or two to recover. Um, it's just the challenge in this some of this slope of country. It's just it's got its uh, unique set of um, trials. But also opportunity too. There's a good opportunity up in the hills a bit. It scares a it scares a few people off the hills and the slopes. And uh, but you often find the soil is probably better, or um, you can you, your rainfall can be a little bit better. Um, your crops can go a little bit better sometimes. But certainly you've got to work harder for it. <laughs> Uh, once again, it's for, for's and against, and uh, depends on people's risk risk profile and um, yeah, I guess people's personalities, I suppose too. That plays a big part, and also maybe debt. Yeah, depends how much debt you're in. Debt can uh, motivate some people in in a positive way. Um, also, debt can. Uh, paralyze people and, and be really a, a negative thing in their life and so I think it's just identifying that not realizing that we're all different and uh, what what helps motivate you and, and keep you in that positive uh, mind frame and um, and spirit I suppose so certainly something we've we've talked about um, as strategies to be able to have that healthy family and uh, friends and um, be, be actually a positive influence on your community and, and your family I suppose so uh, it's identifying that and if, if that's not for you you know there's I don't think there's any shame in that I, I think in a way it's a probably a simple a simple uh, a way of being able to live and know what you have and haven't got um, so anyway, yeah, I don't know how we got talking about that. Sorry, guys. I must be in a reflective mood today, eh? <laughs> oh dear, too much time on the dozer. Anyway, we'll uh, just run this past down here, guys. I think that'll be they'll offset that and then run their bucket down here. I'm on the time. I've got to get to the next job tonight and uh, try and get a couple of days in for him on the next fella before we uh, get this rain. So I'm just trying to hook in as much as I can, do a good job, but keep it moving. Well, I'm back, guys, a few hours later. Then our little gully's in the paddock. I'm just finishing a uh, dressing off a bank here. It's just stopping the water from going out into the paddock and keep it running down where it's meant to run. So, just trying to get the batter sorted out here actually. I'm, sounds funny, but I'm having just a bit of trouble getting dirt up this uh, end here in front of us. And just trying to push it through from the, the back side of it. So, we're getting there, but we're getting there. A lot of uh, silt sort of looks a bit sandy this stuff. It's uh, mostly silt actually. 
If you do, and uh, I have a good one, guys. Catch you later.